What's up guys? So a uh, few things before we start. As always, like, comment, subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And on the note of the whole comment comment, we are looking for new deck lists to make. So please leave your feedback in the comments. Tell us which ones you'd like to see played. And as always, enjoy the video. And let's get straight into this game. So Colin is piloting Kroxa, a Rakdos combo stacks deck. He opened with a Dark Confidant, Ancient Tomb, Command Tower, Swamp, Arcane Signet, Diabolic Intent, and Reverberate. And today Ryan is piloting Neheb, a uh, list constructed by the 99. He opened with Underworld Breach, City of Traitors, Hanweir Battlements, Sandstone Needle, World at War, Desperate Ritual, and a Mountain. Nash is bringing back his Hofree deck, a Boros Aristocrats list. He opened with Spectator Seeing, Marsh Flats, Prismatic Vista, Mana Crypt, Mountain, War Room, and Cavalier of Flames. And we have Kyle back, and he is playing Rocco, a turbo combo deck in uh, Naya. He opened with Emergent Zone, Command Tower, Gemstone Cavern, Arcane Signet, Utopia Sprawl, Orcish Lumberjack, and a Verdant Catacombs. Before the game starts, Kyle has a turn zero action. He puts into play his Gemstone Cavern, exiling his Utopia Sprawl, to give it a luck counter. Colin starts things off with his Ancient Tomb, and then he ramps out an Arcane Signet. On Ryan's turn, he plays a Sandstone Needle, tapped with two Depletion Counters, and passes. Nash starts his first turn off with Spectator Seating, followed by Esper Sentinel. Kyle starts his turn off with a Verdant Catacombs, which he immediately cracks to get a Taiga. Kyle taps out in order to play Arcane Signet, not paying the mana for the Esper Sentinel trigger. He then uses the mana from his Arcane Signet to cast Orcish Lumberjack. Colin starts his turn off by playing a Swamp. He then taps two mana to play Dark Confidant. On Ryan's turn, he plays Henweir Battlements as his land for turn. He then taps out, spending one of the Depletion Counters on his Sandstone Needle in order to cast the First Eruption. He does not pay the one for the Esper Sentinel. On Resolution, the First Eruption deals one damage to all creatures, killing Dark Confidant, Esper Sentinel, and the Orcish Lumberjack. Nash starts his turn off by playing a Prismatic Vista, cracking it in order to get a Mountain into play. He then proceeds to tap out in order to cast his own Arcane Signet. Kyle starts his turn off with an Emergent Zone. He then taps two mana in order to play a Grim Monolith. On Colin's turn, he plays Command Tower as land for turn and then casts Dockside Extortionist. The ETB trigger generates four treasures for him. He then casts Diabolic Intent destroying his Dockside Extortionist. He then Praetor's Grasps Kyle on Ryan's turn. After his draw setup, there's a Saga trigger on the first eruption, giving him two red mana. He then plays City of Traitors as his land for turn, taps out, floating six mana, sacrificing the Sandstone Needle because it no longer has a depletion counter on it, and then casts Neheb. He follows this up by activating his Henweir Battlements to give Neheb haste. He then moves to combat and attacks Colin for five. On the Neheb attack trigger, he discards 5 cards, making 5 mana, and drawing 5 cards. On second main phase, he casts Captain Lannery Storm, followed by a Vessel of Volatility. On Nash's turn, he casts his Mana Crypt, and then follows it up with Sacred Foundry as land for turn, shocking it in for 2. He then proceeds to cast Cavalier of Flame, and passes the turn. Kyle starts his turn off with a Marsh Flats, cracking it to get his Plateau. He then proceeds to cast his Commander, X1, in order to get a Wirewood Symbiote. On Colin's turn, he starts things off with a Mountain as land for turn. Colin then casts Underworld Breach, using his Ancient Tomb for mana, taking 2 damage. He then exiles 3 cards from Graveyard in order to cast his Dockside from his Graveyard, getting 6 treasures off the ETB trigger. He then casts the card he exiled with Praetor's Grass, which is a Teamer Sabertooth, using 2 of his treasures. He proceeds to activate Teamer Sabertooth trying to bounce Dockside Extortionist, but Nash replies by casting Swords to Plowshares on the Teamer Sabertooth. After all this resolves, Colin then recasts his Dockside Extortionist, netting himself another 6 treasures. After Ryan's draw step, the third Saga counter is put on the final eruption. Ryan chooses not to activate its third ability and then sacrifices it. He follows this up by tapping his City of Traders for 2 mana, and then playing a Bloodstained Mire, causing him to sacrifice the City of Traders. He activates the fetch lane to get a Mountain into play, and then taps in order to activate his Vessel of Volatility, putting 4 red mana into pool, leaving him with 5 mana, which he uses to cast World at War. Ryan then moves to his first combat step and attacks Colin with both Neheb and Lannery. Ryan discards and draws 3 cards off the Neheb trigger, making 3 red mana and creating a treasure off Lannery. Ryan then uses all three of the red mana created in order to play Tome of Legends 
and activate its draw, removing a page counter. Ryan then uses Handweir Battlements in order to play a bag of holding and moves to his second combat. He declares attacks on Colin with his Neheb and attacks on Kyle with Landry Storm. Kyle blocks with his commander and uses Wirewood Symbiote to bounce it, and Colin takes five. Ryan makes a treasure off the Landry attack and puts a page counter on his Tome of Legends because he attacked with Neheb. On Neheb's combat damage trigger, Ryan discards two cards, which are exiled by Bag of Holding. He then draws two cards and makes two red mana. He then uses his two red to activate his Bag of Holding. On Nash's upkeep, he fails the crypt trigger and takes three damage. On Nash's turn, he plays a mountain and casts Hofree. Kyle starts his turn off by playing his command tower. He follows this up with a mana vault and his commander, getting his Felidar Guardian into play. He uses the Felidar Guardian's ETB trigger to flicker his Grim Monolith, untapping it. Colin starts his turn off by casting Feed the Swarm and Reverberate in order to destroy the Wirewood Symbiote and the Felidar Guardian. At the start of Ryan's turn, World at War is cast a second time due to the rebound trigger. Ryan activates the second ability on Bag of Holding, putting the three cards he has in exile into hand. Ryan moves to his first combat step and attacks Kyle with both Neheb and Lanry. Ryan adds a page counter to his Tome of Legends and puts a treasure into play. Kyle blocks Lanry and takes five from Neheb. Off the Neheb damage trigger, Ryan discards 6 cards, draws 6 cards, and makes 6 red mana. On 2nd main, Ryan casts Raking Claw on Neheb, followed by Memory Jar, cracking the Memory Jar to draw 7. Ryan moves to combat and attacks Kyle with Neheb. Kyle responds by casting Silence. Colin responds by Chaos Warping his own treasure, hitting a Swamp. On EOT, the delayed Memory Jar trigger happens causing everyone to discard their hand and put their old hand from exile back into their hand on nash's upkeep he fails the crypt trigger taking three damage and then follows this up by casting ao the dawn sky on his first main phase he then passes the turn kyle plays city of brass and passes colin starts his turn off by tapping his ancient tomb taking two damage and then casts tiny bones he follows this up by casting croxa who then has two etb triggers causing everyone to discard one card and then being sent to the graveyard. Colin then escapes Croxa, paying four mana, exiling three cards, causing everyone to discard another card. Then on end step, Tiny Bones triggers, drawing him a card and losing him one life. Ryan responds to the Tiny Bones trigger by activating his Tome of Legends to draw a card. On Ryan's turn, he moves straight to combat and attacks Kyle with his commander. Kyle responds by activating Emergent Zone in order to flash out his commander, getting a Karmic Guide into play. Karmic Guide returns Felidar Guardian to play, flickering the Karmic Guide, getting Recruiter of the Guard into play. Kyle then tutors Kiki Jiki to hand. Ryan discards three and draws three and makes three mana off the Neheb attack trigger. He then, on second main phase, casts Winds of Change, causing everyone to shuffle their hands and draw the same number of cards. On EOT, there's another Tiny Bones trigger, giving Colin a card and dealing one damage to him. On Nash's turn, his Crypt triggers. He does not take damage this turn. He then proceeds to cast Sun Titan, which, off the ETB trigger, gets a Goblin Engineer into play. Goblin Engineer has an ETB trigger, allowing him to put Phyrexian Altar from his library into Graveyard. Nash then passes the turn. On Kyle's turn, he pays 4 mana to untap Mana Vault and passes. Colin starts things off with his Mox Opal. He moves to combat and attacks Croxa, causing another discard trigger. Then on second main phase, he activates Tiny Bones in order to deal 10 to Kyle. On Ryan's turn, he activates his Tome of Legends to draw a card, then plays Prismatic Vista, cracking it to get a mountain, followed by a Crow Mox. Nash starts things off by activating his Goblin Engineer in order to sacrifice his Arcane Signet to get Phyrexian Altar into play. He then proceeds to sacrifice AO to the Altar, getting him a token copy of AO and AO's Death Trigger. The Death Trigger puts into play a Fanatic Devotion and Call Me a False Hope. Nash then sacrifices the Sun Titan, getting a token copy, causing another ETB trigger, returning Mother of Runes, which he immediately sacrifices to make a token copy. He then casts Cavalier of Dawn 
destroying the Felidar Guardian. He then moves to combat and swings out at Ryan for 30. On second main phase, he double sacrifices his Cavalier of Flames, causing two triggers, dealing 14 damage to all players, winning the game. Uh, before you all peel out of here, I'd just like to say thank you for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, again, like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out our channel. And thank you to everyone who supports us and helps us with our content.